talk again on causality. Causality is the most important thing to think about science, to think about ethics, to think about the juridical role. For example, you have someone that acts in a wrong way, that is considered a wrong way. What is the effect of this? How can I bring responsibility, liability for this person? Right? So here we have two things in this case, the causality and the self. That is another big issue on philosophy. On science, how can I discover the cause, the root cause or the main cause of a disease? Right? And when we think about science, we think about basically physicists, right? The chemistry, the chemistry, and the biology. So, if we think that first we have the physicists, like Max Planck saying, well, life is what's measurable, right? What we can metrify, measure. It's the small element in a physics point of view, there is no difference among us or among the objects because all of us are atoms, right? Che chemistry. When we think about chemistry, do you know what is the difference in the periodic table among the elements? The atomic number. So, quality Maybe can be a issue of quantity. What is the difference among the chemistry elements? The atomic number, right? And biology. Our DNA, our genetic code. There is no difference in a biological level among us. I and you are the result of a sequence of A, C, G, and Z, right? So, science, this is the base science. In this perspective, we have causality in all these areas, right? Well, one thing is important to say. If the video that I uh, saw is not a deep fake, so Heidegger said a thing that is very important. It's very important. Because this uh, philosopher said, Look, everyone today, I think that it was 50 years ago, I don't know, any person can operate a TV or a radio, but only a few persons knows how the physical laws behind TV and radio, only a few law persons, only a few specialists know this. So, what he's saying, that we live in a society where we need trust, right? Where we need the trust 
element because you don't know how your computer works inside the hardware you need someone that is specialized in this issue you don't know what happens inside your body you need persons like physicians, physicists, biomedicals, medicals, right? Devices. So, we need trust in the other. We don't know what happens in that moment, but we need that service, for example, right? Again, the causality problem. Right? The causality problem. But let's come back. Max Planck said, life it is what is measurable. Measurable. Right? So we are talking now about quantity. Right? So from physics, we go to mathematician of course everyone thinks no let's start in the mathematician and we go to the physicist no let's do the opposite way so we are talking about causality and causality uh, is related with a lot of human activities including religion including science include uh, the juridical role, including the trust among the members of a society, right? A modern society today. Now let's face another issue. If we, we are talking about causality, we are talking about also quantity, right? How we, what is the calculation idea? What is the notion of quantity? What means a number, right? Because causality and effect. Causality. We need to measure how this process are. A lot of cause. We need to understand a lot of cause. What is quantity? So, these are hard questions. These are philosophical questions that there is no correct answer. We think about causality, we think about quantity, right? We think about what is health, what is justice, what is aesthetics. This is the work, the job of a, of a, a philosopher. Let's come back to Heidegger. In this video, he also says, Communists is a kind of religion because communists have belief in the results and the security of science. In a, in a way, that is the same of religion. It's a belief in the security and the results of science. But pay attention, look to the world, to the universe, and inside your body. So, we are living in a world that we can count the things, we can see the things, we can hear the things, touch the things, right? This is the way that we acquire knowledge a first kind of knowledge, information, data from the world, right? And inside of our head, 
to start to work with this information and produce knowledge according to some persons and philosophers, not according to others. Okay. So, we need our body and our mind to produce a knowledge. Right. This is very difficult because our body something that is not precise, right? If you are sick, the way that you feel the taste of the food change, right? For example. Or you need a microscope to see a cell. Or you need a telescope to see the universe. So, the knowledge is something that demands our body and our mind, the structures of the mind that works with causality, for example. Okay, but pay attention. Do you know how many stars exist? How many planets? What is the space and the time of the universe? We are talking about eternity. How many kilometers, how many meters of distance there's between I and the moon or the sun? Right? So we are very small. And what we know about the universe, we know almost anything about the universe. This is the truth. The truth. Maybe the only truth that Socrates Arwen said. I only know that I know nothing. So, from Socrates and the notion of the only thing that I know is that I know nothing about the universe, right? From so Socrates, we can go to Descartes because Descartes do not accept this. And the cards will say, well, even, even if exists a God of evil that are building a fake world and put me inside this, so if everything that I see and this and taste and smell everything it's a lie even in this situation there is something that I know 
that is an absolute notion. It's a certainty that is cogito ergo sum. So, if I have a doubt, I have certain that I have a doubt, right? So, even being everything fake, one security point to restart a scientific to looking for the truth, the first point, if I'm with a doubt, I'm in the process of doubt, it's because I exist. So, cogito ergo sum. But Hume do not accept this. And here, we can think in the issue of the self, right? What is the self? In the beginning, in the other lecture, The self can be different according to the scientific perspective, right? So we can be atoms for physics, or we can uh, be elements for chemistry or we can be a sequence of A, C, T, and G for biology. What is the self according a scientific perspective? And what is the self according a philosophical perspective that will be putting the target against causality because for him the experience is the key element right in the next video So let's come back to Hume, right? And the causality issue on philosophy and sciences. Well, the first thing is, when we think about Hume, the experience is the key element to understand his philosophy. So we have a cause that generates an effect. He will think on this causality principle, right? Causality. And what he will say? Look, there are two elements very important in causality. Why? Because if we broke the implication that exists among these those elements, these elements, right? If we broke, there is no contigui, contiguity, contiguity. So one of the elements of causality in a first perspective is contiguity, right? What is contiguity? This is contiguity, but not this, right? So, contiguity. 
Another important element on the causality notion. Necessary connection, right? What is necessary connection? And here we will enter in another uh, issue that is we are thinking two separated objects. One is cause, other is effect. Why? This is necessarily the effect of this. It's a question. So, one kind of philosophers will say the cause and the effect are in the same moment. So, the first cause will cause itself. This is one argument. And Hume will say, this is not valid. Because our experience will not show this to us. Or, another issue. How can something exist from nothing? So, if you have an effect, it is possible this effect coming from nothing. So, usually, at the side of contiguity, we have the necessary connection. But what Hume will say about these two elements? Well, this is all the result of memories. Why? Because, and here is an important notion, we are talking about impression. Right? Impression that we receive that our body can feel impressions in our mind also. So we are talking about impression. And when this becomes regularly, so we think that because something happens a lot of time we start to think that this implication is a necessary thing so we are talking that the causality is a result of our repeated experience, right? That showed to us what? A constant conjunction. This is what causality is for him. So we have a new vision here, right? Because, and he, and, and this is a, a very difficult point. Why? Because if causality is the result of constant conjunction, right? Memories, impression. So what is the self? This is an open issue yet. What is the self for him? What is the cause of the self? Because if the causality is experience, what is the self?
let's talk about Hume and his concept of causality, his notion of causality. Because if for Hume, David Hume, even the causality, the causation, is a matter of added, so the self, the soul, the substance, the identity also is the result of the experience, right? What is the notions of the self? That is something that do not change. It's not variable. There is no interruption. It is an identity. Right? When you take your picture when you were a child and when you take a picture and put the side at the side five years ago and take another picture today you will see that it's different persons but because the things happen so fast we cannot see that is the ad the experience that produce to us the feeling of an identity. So the memory that the succession of events of phenomena, the experience that show to us that among between these phenomena there is a similarity, right? So this similarity with the time and the succession of the similarities, we change the relation among objects to a notion of identity. But this, because our structure, right? So, as well as we cannot say that causality is an a priori sense, a sense that is before the experience, we cannot say this. So, we also cannot say that the self is something that has contiguity, right? Because it's not true. The self is only the result of our experience that make our different times be solved as an habit. And this habit transform the relation among the separate events into something that feels like a movement, right? What is the movement? Think a lot of pictures, the movement is when it's so fast the way that these pictures came one from another that you feel that is movement. So, causality, the self is only the result of experience. When David Hume look inside him, looking for an identity, the only thing that he said that found was image of 
his memory. Right? So, the self is an illusion for the Igdihim. And this was so crucial. So, uh, there is so many importance on this movement that David Hume did in the philosophy that Immanuel Kant, one of the most famous philosophers, said about him, Hume, wake me from the dogmatic dream. There is no self. You are on. You are on. Seeing the same thing happens, or better saying, different things happen that has similarity among them, and how these things happen so fast and how these things happen always you think that there's something call it identity but there is no identity and here a lot of persons will say Hume is like a Buddhist right in this meaning that there is no self so we already talked in the other lectures about Christianity, Islamism, and now we are talking about Buddhism. And at the side of the religions, we are talking about science, right? Causality, identity, there are concepts usually use it in the science with whom are being contested and we are talking about philosophy right we began with Socrates I all know that I know nothing we go to the cards cogito ergo sum je pense donc je suis And we go to him. There is no identity, there is no self, the causality is only the result of your experience, your habits. Next video. Kant. So we are talking about David Hume and the notion of causality, but it's important we think that when Hume attacks the causality principle, saying that, look, everything is the result of habits, what David Hume is saying is that we have the impermanence of the things. And this is a big issue on the philosophy, right? Why? Because permanence and impermanence. This issue, let's, let's use a philosopher before Hume, that is called Giordano Bruno. We are in modernity yet. And I will read only one uh, part of his test because uh, we are talking about permanence and impermanence and this is related with the time. Now let's use the same mechanism but related with the space. And concerning the space, let's see what Giordano Bruno said. 
Uh, this is a Portuguese version of the book I will translate you to English. If the word is finite and out of the word is the nothing, I ask, where is the world? Where is the universe? So, also Giordano Bruno think that we have the permanence or the impermanence. Right? Concerning time are the infinite and definite, finite, concerning space. And let's come back in the ancient philosophy. We already talked about Heraclitus and the uh, notion that the only thing that is permanent is the changing. <laughs> right? So, uh, maybe a half of millennium before Christ, a little before Heraclitus, we have Anaximenes saying that everything came from water. So what we have here? A principle of changing, right? The constant changing of the things. So here we are uh, we are talking about the permanence and the impermanence, the finite and the infinite, right? In the modern philosophy and the, in the ancient philosophy. This is a, an introduction course to the philosophical way, to the philosophical path. So, what is important? We have some ways to study philosophy. We can choose a philosopher and we shall do this or some philosophers to uh, this author, author, this thinker in a deep way, in a vertical way. So how this author works with all the big issues of philosophy and at the same time we should study in a horizontal way. So we need to see the history of philosophy and some key subjects Right? So, in this introduction to the philosophical way, to the philosophical path, we are talking about causality, reason, science, faith, skepticism, right? In the modern, in the ancient philosophy. Let's go to Kant now. Air differs in essence in accordance with its heritage or density. When it's tiny, it becomes fire, while when it's condensed, it becomes wind, then cloud, when it's still more condensed, it becomes water, then earth, then stones. Everything else comes from these. Anaximenes. A half millennium before Christ, Anaximenes. So let's go to Immanuel Kant, right? A big difference among the ancient philosophy and the modernity, the modern philosophy, is the change of perspective concerning this. In the ancient philosophy, you have a division between a material world, universe, and a formal, ideal world, universe. When we go to the modernity, This division is not only concerning the being of object, the cosmos, the universe, but also concerning uh, the subject. So, the subject also is divided, right? So, on one side, we can have the experience 
and on the other side the reason, the pure reason, right? So when we come back to the ancient philosophy, we think about Plato and his theory of the forms, right? So the highest degree of being in the ancient philosophy in Plato is what? The ideal world that we have copies here. So when you take a book, there's an idea, a form of the book, of any book, right? Any book. And, and every book. And here is the sensitive. So the copy has less bang than the ideal form. Right? Okay. When we go to the modernity, we will have Kant developing a second uh, division, not a division of the object or, or uh, an ontology division, right? But there is also a division of the subject. So we have ways to use the reason, right? And we can think in this way. We have the word of nature, right? And we have the world of We can say, he will say nominal, but we can say the word of the ethics, right? There is a division here. And the way to understand each one of these universes will change according what we are looking for. So, the laws concerning ethic and the laws concerning nature, we use differently our reason to understand, right? So, one of the questions, and here uh, there is the connection with the Hume, is there is a Division also concerning the experience and what is do not need experience, a knowledge that do not need the experience to be another. So we can have concerning the laws of ethics, right? the word of ethics a priori before the experience and a posteriori or after the experience with experience what we have a priori, our structure, the structure of the transcendental subject, right? So this structure will work with the, the elements of time and space. We have 
the structure of time and space as a law of our reason that do not need experience to be as our element, our structural element. <coughs> so, one of the questions will be, is it possible a knowledge that do not need experience? Yes, it is possible. But to acquire this knowledge, you cannot use the reason in a wrong way. There is a correct way of the use of reason. So, at the side, you will have the practical reason, right? as well as at the side you will have a theoretical reason if I use this reason to know this row will not work if I use this reason to know this row will not work <coughs> So, the knowledge that is after the experience the knowledge that is after the experience here in this side Kant will say this is anthropology And the knowledge before the a priori, before the experience, right? A priori, in Latin, you will have moral, <coughs> morality. You don't need experience to have a knowledge on an universal ethics. You don't need the experience only to observe your own reason. So, what is important to remember that here in this world before the experience, the theory of reason also will have what? Notions of time, space, quality, and quantity. These are the elements of our structure, rational structure. <coughs> and here we have the physics. as well as here, physics, right, experience, and here and here we have what, what is beyond the physics, or meta, that is a Greek word, 
meta physics meta physics right Attention on this. This is the structure of the subject in Kant, right? But let's think about another issue in the Kantian philosophy that is, he classified two kinds of uh, not a demand, right? So, can't you say there's a not demand that is analytical? So, you only explain what is inside the subject, and there is another kind of judgment that we uh, do on the result of our sensitive side that is the uh, uh, judgment that works with synthesis that adds something to the predicate right and when we're thinking pure science the theor theoretical reason we also can say the pure reason reason pure reason what kind of uh, model we have here? Mathematics. Right? What is mathematics for Kant? So, it's important we understand that in, in the Kantian philosophy, the mathematics it's not an analytical judgment, but it is a extensive a uh, synthetic judgment because the concept of seven is not inside here it's the result of adding things so one two three one two three four one two three four five six seven so you add things concepts, notions. And what Kant wants to do is there is another kind of knowledgement so pure like mathematics or like the pure physics in the practical side of the human being. Is it possible I find universal laws without the need of the experience So, what Kant is trying to do is, okay, we have the world, we use our subject, our structure of pure reason to know this natural world, this physical world, this material world, the experience. 
experience that world, right? But it's also important to think if there is another world that is the ethical world, right? The world of the practice. So our subject also has structures such as a practical reason to work with our experience to find a so pure phenomenon like mathematics in the practical world of the human beings. So he's trying to uh, bring fundamentals to the ethics that can state run rude ethical rude works in any place of the road any time of the road so how we are talking about this rationality rationality Kant said that Hume wake him from the dogmatic dream because Hume showed to Kant that it's necessary the experience to a first kind of enlightenment. But Kant came and this is not enough. So let's come back to the rationalism, right? So Kant considered the experience, but he's mainly a rationalist. So let's uh, study uh, more Kant, and we already talk about the subject and the identity in the Hume's philosophy as an illusion, right? But here in Kant, uh, there's an important issue that is the things of the judgment, the two kinds of the judgment. Uh, we were talking about Kant and of course for sure I use it sometimes a not a technical in a technical meaning inside the uh, Kant's vocabulary the word not meant, right? One important thing to the study of philosophy is you understand what is the meaning that the philosopher wants to bring to that word? Each philosopher builds a concept in key words. So, coming back, let's talk about the judgment and the subject in Kant. Because Kant put the subject. subject as the uh, main point in the understanding of the universe is not anymore the cosmos that regulates but the human reason that regulates the knowledge so the subject in Kant we have the reason the pure reason and the practical reason. The pure reason to know the natural world and the practical reason to know or better saying to act 
Amen. Ethical world, right? And Kant will uh, say that it's a division among judgments that are analytical and judgments that are synthetic. What is the difference? So the human being proceed with judgments. Analytical judgments. Is it, is it possible to say this? I think I know. So the subject got an experience, right? By the intuitive element of the human being, then this go to uh, categorize it concerning time, space. We are talking about the pure reason as example, right? For a reason. And then the subject will produce a not admit with judgment. So the subject will proceed with a judgment. And the judgment can be analytical and synthetic. The analytical judgment works with the principle of identity, the principle of contradiction. Why? Because the judgment that is analytical, here is the subject. All you need is inside the subject. There is no predicate that you put, that you add here. If you add some predicate here, so it's not anymore uh, analytical judgment, but a syntactical one. And what is the principle that operates here? The contradiction principle. That is, every object has extension. There is no object without extension. So, you work with the presence and the not presence. It's a dialectics, right? So when we talk about the principle of contradiction is because the identity demands both. So let's talk about how can't we think on the subject because if the identity works with the contradiction principle every thing has an extension anything has no extension How works the subject, the psychological subject, the self, in the Kantian philosophy? When I say the self, I say the soul, the substance, we can use different words, words right? How work this? First thing, 
the subject is what rests when you take off the predicate, right? So, when you take off the predicates, you will see the limits and the subject is self-explained, right? When you take off the predicate, what rests, what remains, what remains is the subject. So, the first thing in a theory of knowledge, because what Kant is doing is like not geology, how it's possible the knowledge, right? The understanding. The knowledge is something that works with relations, right? Subject and a lot of predicates. Get out the predicates, what remains is the self. But it's not possible to know what is the self, what is the soul, what is the psychological self. It's not possible to know. Only is possible you know that exists because there is no experience in a being that is not living, right? And knowledge is the result of a process that uses experience. Without experience, there is no knowledge. So, in a ideal world, in the a priori, before the experience world, we do not have experience, right? So, it's impossible, the knowledge. The self is what remains when there is no other predicate. There is no experience to explain the self. And here we come back to the rationalism of the cards, but in a different way. Kant will say the rationalism of the cards is concerned the external road, right? The material road. And can also will say, in my perspective, in my rationalism, or in any perspective, the rationalism is also concerning inside the being where there is no experience, right? So it's a transcendental rationalism. And Kant will do this movement to amplify the jurisdiction of the rationalism in the history of philosophy. Of course, in the history of philosophy, because philosophically, the rationalism, the idealism, right, demands what? Demands that there is the perpetual, the infinite, the not changing of the things, the form, the ideal. And when we come back to the ancient philosophy with Parmenides, that is considered the father of metaphysics, it is possible to understand in the dialogues of Plato, because we 
no Parmenides by other uh, thinkers like Plato. And we will see that even the movement cannot exist in the idealism, in the rationalism, right? So, in our introduction to the philosophical way, where we are now, we are in a situation that, by one side, we show the empirism, right? The scepticism with Bacon, the modernity, with Heraclitus in the ancient philosophy, and in this other side, we were talking about the idealism, Kant, Parmenides, right? Between these two, the cards. So, in the ancient philosophy, Parmenides, and the Plato's works. In the modern philosophy, the cards and a development with Kant. So, what is the our vision now? Our vision is an ontology perspective, the beings divided since the ancient philosophy in an ideal world, a formal world, and a sensitive world, a not perfect world, right? Also, the, there is a division in the process to acquire knowledge among the subject and among the object, right? And Kant will bring us a new idea. Also, there is a division inside the subject, right? In a pure reason, theoretical reason, and even when we think in judgment, in a analytical judgment that brings the contradiction principle and the, the idea, the notion of identity in Kant, we can saw that the being is divided it's possible think a contradiction and our reason think in contradictions right it's perfect possible you defend arguments that the space is limited finite or that the space is infinite you can think in these both senses with good arguments so the bank can think the contradiction okay and this do not necessarily uh, shows that the nature has a contradiction but it's how everything is divided ontologically the being and the, the copies, right? The ancient philosophy. In the modernity, the subject and the object, the subject inside the object, because there is two kinds of reasons. And if you use the ways of one reason to solve problems that only the other region, reason can solve, do not works. It's everything divided 
anthology, gnosiology, epistemology. What will happen now? So, let's go from Kant to Hegel. That is the last big, big philosopher of the rationalism, of the idealism, better saying, in the modern philosophy. Came now, I will tell thee, and do to hear to my saying and carry it away. The only two ways of search that can be thought of. The first, namely, that it is, and that it is impossible for anything not to be, is the way of conviction, for truth is its companion. The other, namely, that it is not, and that something must needs not be, that I tell thee is a holy and trustworthy path, for you cannot know what is not, that is impossible, nor utter it, for it is the same thing that can be taught and that can be. Parmenides. Parmenides. Ever newer waters flow on those who step into the same rivers. We both step and do not step in the same rivers. We are and are not. Heraclitus. Heraclitus. So let's keep talking about the uh, German philosophy first and especially talk about Hegel. So we came from Kant and Kant said it's impossible we have an experience in the cultural world, in the world of ethics, in the noumenal world, right? So. Hegel do not accept this because for Hegel we have an experience also in the uh, not material world so it's an experience of the thought right so let's imagine that this is the object right the thing date object a subject subject will see this object right so here we can put the self the subject This is a first impression, a sensitive element, right? So, the first thing, this object, became inside the subject, a thought, right? A thinking. Okay, so we have here this side objective, Objective and here is subjective. So 
subjective, subjectivity, right? So the thought permits me know that there's a, a world outside me, and this is uh, operates through a negation that determines. These are the first two moments, right? So the it is it for something. For what? For the subject. So it for the subject. And this subject will transform the thought in an object. And here we start with the experience. That is not material, it's an experience in the thinking process, right? And this will result in a synthesis, right? Of the object and the subject, the thought of the subject. And here we will have the thought. On the thought, the thinking on the thinking, right? So it it for This is the object, this is the subject, this is the object plus the subject, right? So it's the same thing of the same. And here we have what? The universality. that brings together the result of the movement among object and subject, right? And this universality that brings together the particularity world together with the individual world Or the singularity and here we have the universality in a process of synthesis right synthesis the test, the antithesis, and the synthesis. And here we will have another moment because the thought on the thought will become another object, right? So here we will have this as the first particularity, objectivity, right? The thought. And here we will have experience inside the subject. So it's the it for the subject again, right? But it's also for the self. For the self.
and here you have a third moment again so you can see that there is a process and this process it's like an spiral and this is why we can say that if Kant bring the rationalism to the extreme what Hegel will do bring the rationalism to the idealism in the meaning that the object and the subject will we put together so what is real is rational and what is rational is real and we can think that this movement this movement that is dialectics right that demands a negation a negative approach as something that determines the thing so the negation is not the nothing but is something that is necessary to determination right and this negative that is used as a necessary element in the process of the enlightenment of the reason right becoming the spirit spirit the guys of the times the spirit is the result of the activity of the reason and the reason works with negative determinism in a dialectic process right so what hegel will do is put together if we think in ancient philosophy parmenides and heraclitus right because for Parmenides the only thing is that it is it's impossible you know about not it is and and this is totally uh, related with the idea that the real is rational and the rational is real as well as we will have together with Parmenides of course Heraclitus because the dialectical process our was uh, show it to us by Heraclitus, right? So at the same time the thing is and is not. Hegel will bring together what Hegel will do the absolute the absolute the idealism he will bring together the object and the subject as the same dialect what is real is rational, what is rational is real.
So where we are now in our uh, introduction to the Western philosophical way, we already talked about the ancient philosophy and the modern philosophy. We can think in the ancient philosophy some fi uh, some thinkers that we already talked about, like Anaximenes, Heraclitus, Parmenides. Socrates, Plato, Plato, and Aristotle. Right? In the ancient philosophy. And in the modern philosophy, We already talked about Giordano Bruno, Descartes, Hobbes, Hume, Kant. Of course, it's an overview on only an issue or other that these philosophers works with, right? And our subjects, our issues in this introduction to the Western philosophy we talked about cosmology, right? Ontology, right? Theory of knowledge. Gnosiology, epistemology, right? That is knowledge, the opposite of the Greek word doxa. So we are talking about science. reason that in the ancient philosophy we can say logos right and also we are talking about religion and causality as well as subject and object, right? So, and now, let's keep going. But before we proceed in the modernity, we have Schopenhauer here.
And I want to talk a little about Schopenhauer because uh, in another in another course we will talk about the Eastern philosophy, an initiation to Eastern philosophy. And Schopenhauer is one of the Western philosophers that go to the Eastern to learn more. But let's keep our focus because causality is a big problem to think about reason, religion, philosophy, right? And here there is a movement, right? And the subject you have more and more importance. And Schopenhauer will say the word is a representation, the signs is the connection among representations, right? But before we go to Schopenhauer, I want to only say a phrase of the ancient philosophy that is in the Oracle of Delphi. Know yourself. Know yourself and you will know the gods and the universe. Of course, because if you cannot know about yourself, how can you know about anything different of yourself? I'm a philosopher and a lawyer here in Brazil, and I will present to you my works on the past years concerning the philosophical field. So, since I finished my bachelor on philosophy and finish also a master on philosophy, a strict sense of research on the University of São Paulo here in Brazil. I started to uh, write in freely, in a free way, a lot of issues, philosophical issues. And the result of these tests are in these books here. So we can see that there is a order not in the development of the tests and the uh, and the thinking, but there is a order that I structured first a book that I call it fragments. That is this book, right? Here I talk about reason, freedom, creation, death, time, love, language, politics, God, rhetoric, truth, technology. In tests that are more free, I do not necessarily refer to a philosopher, even that I use, of course what I learned with the philosophers but here is more outer role it's more myself a second book is 
filosofia antiga, that concerning the ancient philosophy. I hope that I can translate this to English as soon as possible. And here we will have Heraclitus, Plato, Aristoteles, and uh, Six and Peric. I don't know how to say this word in English yet. Uh, but it's a skepticism. The third book is Philosophy and the Modernity, Modern Philosophy. And here I will bring my research on the university and other tests concerning ethics, law, politics, nature and culture, freedom, power, justice, state, human and critics. Of course, modern philosophy, so you will find here Hobbes, Kant, Hegel, Diderot, Rousseau, and others. Uh, and these three books the, the are followed read by the politics in Brazil. All these books are in Portuguese language. I hope to translate soon. But politics in Brazil, you will find issues like Brazil culture, elections, uh, politics in Brazil, strategy, communication, technology, psychology, power, revolution. So it's about the political scenario here in Brazil. These first four books you also can find that are pocket books you also can find in this uh, version that is a the result of these four books but in another uh, format, right? And we have a a uh, second, second, uh, I swear that I work with sovereignty and human rights, right? So here, also, Diderot, Rousseau, Kant, Hegel, Allen, Freud, Freud, History, War, Communism, Capitalism, Totalitarianism, Empire, Revolution, Politics, Law, Ethics, Justice, Liberty, and Power. So, sovereignty and human rights. And after this, we have the legal philosophy. Legal philosophy, Socrates, Aristoteles, Hobbes, Locke, Kant, Kelsen. And the second sphere of the work that uh, how I said before, is these two books, right? So the first one, Sovereignty and Human Rights, and the second one, Philosophy of Law, Legal Philosophy. And in this book of Legal Philosophy, Socrates, Aristotle, Hobbes, Locke, Kent, Kelsen, Hill, and I, Legal Philosophy in the Ancient Philosophy, in the Modern Philosophy, in the Contemporary philosophy right these two books are also in Portuguese and there is another version these two books are inside uh, philosophy 2 that is a book like this and uh, third sphere is concerning these three books that together will uh, constitute the philo philosophy tree. I don't have the number two and three here now. This is the number one. But it's like this edition, right? A standard edition in paperback. So this book, Education, Logic, Science and Technology and Moral Systems, 
So we can find here since issues on God to uh, issues on logic and masons, right? And education. Uh, this other book is concerning my works in the literary field. So some poems and, and tales, a lot of tales. It's also in Portuguese, all these books are in Portuguese. I hope that someday I can translate to English. And here in this book we can find the following literary stars. Estreia Salakoff, eu confesso que cometi um crime, tempo e amor, a morte da morte, a festa e outros contos e poesias. And the last book is concerning uh, self-knowledge, so life and psychism, how to know it and how to develop. Here you will find uh, tests on philosophy, psychology, psychanalysis, orientalism, uh, the Eastern philosophy, right? Self knowledge, self help, death, more uh, sex conditions, right? So it's a uh, book that is a self modern book but with the perspective of a philosopher right and these three books together is the uh, edition philosophy number three the standard edition so all these books are the result of my work on philosophy in the past two days it's or since I born, right? And I did the first version then of these books, but not in the pocket uh, edition, but in the standard one. So uh, when I revise the test, when I revise, I do not let anything I just uh, add things right uh, even if I think that it's wrong I explain why it's wrong so the second edition I did this and the books uh, came with more tests and these are the result of the third edition so from the first edition, I don't know, maybe 10 years. So it's the work uh, of my life that I will develop until I die. Simple as that. You are welcome to Cain and See the books, read the books, discuss the books. I will love to discuss the issues of these books with the persons. So, before I forget, I a last thing on my words. words that is, you can find uh, part of the first editions available in public domain and the second edition I think that you also can find in public domain but the third edition, this one that uh, has new tests right, and a revision of the past editions. This new edition yet is not in public domain, but you can find online in my website 
to read online or you can buy this in the Amazon of the United States.